Welcome back to another episode of Divorce at Altitude. I'm Ryan Calamea, one of your co-hosts. This week, I am joined by Tommy Maloney. He is an author on uh, fathers going through a divorce. Uh, he is a podcast host, uh, Blending the Family. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, that. Um, so first of all, uh, Tommy, how you, how you doing down in Gre Greeley, Colorado? I'm doing great. How's the altitude up there in Vail? Well, I, I think probably at the time we're recording this, uh, it's uh, smoky here. Um, oh, you know, where sorry. there's smoke, there's fire. Uh, unfortunately, we don't, the, the, the fires um, are way off in Oregon, apparently. But um, other than that, uh, doing pretty well. So for members of uh, or listeners who don't uh, know you, can you give us a little background into, you know, who Tommy Maloney is? Oh my gosh, we don't have enough time for that, Ryan. And and you're a you're a lawyer, not a therapist. So well, sometimes as a lawyer, you play a therapist on TV. Um, it, like you said, Ryan, I'm Tommy Maloney. I run a business called Blending the Family, and it all stemmed from you know watching my parents get divorced when I was five, and then after I got married for, for the first time, I ended up getting divorced, and then I got remarried and have two awesome bonus daughters and I just never found anything as far as content or books out there that help uh, blended families or dads or men. And so I said, what the heck, I'm going to create my own opportunity. And you have a son from your first marriage, right? I do, who is uh, college bound this fall of 2021. And I'm extremely nervous that um, I, I hope I've done everything I can to help prepare him for his college endeavors, but he's going to have to fail on his own because that's that's what life is all about. It is indeed. Well, well let's talk about your first um, you know, marriage and, and not necessarily the marriage part, but how did you find out that you were about to go through a divorce? You know, it's one of my favorite stories to tell now. Uh, at the time, it wasn't as funny, but it was in the uh, September of, where are we, 2008. And for my day job, I travel for work. I do software training. And at that time, it was a Sunday. It was football season, early football season. And I was just packing my suitcase. And my former spouse came up to me and said, hey, I'd like to talk. And I said, can we wait? I want to watch the football game. And she walked out of the room. I should say stormed out of the room saying, fine. And as a man, as a married man, understand if you hear a woman say fine, it's not fine. And so later on that evening, uh, she uh, said, I want a divorce. And it just hit me like a ton of bricks because we were going through uh, marriage counseling, couples counseling. And my inclination is that, you know, couples in counseling don't get divorced. Well, I was totally wrong. And so uh, from there, the next day I was on a plane to California and that was a Monday. And by Wednesday, uh, FedEx showed up to the job site I was at with my uh, divorce papers. So it was it was pretty quick. Uh, what was the experience like? Was it uh, quick and easy or uh, was it something a little bit um, more emotional for you? Oh, it was definitely emotional. I mean, uh, as somebody who's gone through uh, years of therapy, uh, battling depression, uh, several suicide attempts when I was a lot younger, um, it was it was rough because I I'm such an introvert, Ryan, that I don't like to share personal things uh, outside of the work, and so. Um, I, I felt pretty much on my own, even though I did have a good, uh, close family. You know, I was on the phone constantly with my mom and my dad and uh, dear friends of mine that had gone through divorce. So I was getting a lot of great help as far as uh, mental, but the probably the biggest thing, and I'm not, I'm not just saying this because I know what you do, Ryan, but the biggest mistake I made was I didn't go through uh, any kind of legal counsel. I didn't go through or we didn't go through any mediation. And so that that added uh, a lot of stress even after the after the divorce, because I ended up in court uh, years later 
um, because my former spouse wanted to move out of the state of Colorado to uh, Wisconsin and taking our son. So I learned a life lesson there, Ryan, uh, get things in writing. Well, so, um, you know, you said that you, she told you on a Sunday and then Wednesday, uh, the paper showed up. Was that just to start the process? That wasn't um, that you were done with your divorce in, in just a matter of a couple of days, uh, was it? No, it was mostly, it was the parenting agreement, um, going through that, you know, custody, um, you know, uh, the financial piece. So it was uh, very traumatic, obviously, but it was also uh, just a weird out-of-body experience, you know, sitting in California at, again, at a place that I was working and just going through papers that essentially dissolving a marriage and just feeling like a total failure as a man, as a husband, as a, as a father. And you ended up writing uh, one of your books is 25 tips for divorced dads. Uh, why'd you write the book? It was cheaper than therapy. Um, the, the backstory of that was I was flying on Sundays to uh, LaGuardia airport from Denver every Sunday. And I would just say, I, I want to, I, I got to write, I got to get, get the emotions out. And so I just started writing ideas and then more ideas popped in my head. And one of them was writing a book about how do I stay connected with my son when I'm not in the same household. And so that's what the first book, 25 Tips for Divorced Dads, came came out of was just me trying to figure out, all right, what do I do? And, you know, one of the tips was writing postcards. Another tip was getting, and this is before um, laptops were starting to come with uh, uh, cameras like we have now. So it was getting a webcam, you know, quantity time versus quality time. So those things just started popping in my head. And turn it into a book and, and hopefully it, it, it's helped other men. It's actually, um, I had a flight attendant on a Southwest flight and she was just doing great customer service. And I said, I, I don't have any cash on me, but I have one of my books. And she said, you know, this book would be great for, for moms as well. So I, I really didn't think of it that way. I was just, you know, writing to be, you know, cathartic and just trying to get help to other dads out there. So yeah, I guess the book can help both moms and dads. And to give listeners an idea of your parenting schedule and your journey, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how often you were seeing your son and, you know, kind of the changes you mentioned, um, a, a, an attempt at relocation and, and what happened, um, you know, in the divorce and, and throughout the post-divorce phase? Yeah, so for me, because I traveled for work, um, I I really didn't have the funds at the time to to go house hunting, and so the first phase was to save up some money in order to find a place for some stability for my son Connor and I uh, for the weekend. So I had him every other weekend, and there were many times. So the divorce was final December of 2008. So September 2008, I'm told I'm, uh, my former spouse wants a divorce by December 23rd, a date that will live in infamy in my head. Uh, I was officially divorced. And so the weekends I had my son, we pretty much were in hotels. Um, he did have a stipulation and one stipulation, the hotel had to have a pool which was funny because he couldn't swim at the time, but it was a great bonding moment. So I got to teach him how to swim and we ordered room service. We, we had, you know, in, in my mind, Ryan, it wasn't a perfect situation. Um, I mean, he, he said to me, you know, months later, said, when are you going to get your own place, dad? And so, you know, that lit a fire in me to, you know, start looking for, again, uh, a house that, you know, he and I can start building uh, memories off of. So, you know, it was it was rough um, those first few years of you know traveling, only having him uh, every other weekend. But you know, and, and that's the thing. You know, not to not to self promote, but I have a new book coming out, and 
you know, I was going through editing one of the chapters and one of the things that came to my mind, Ryan, was that, you know, things that my dad said to me that he always apologized for being a bad dad. And it's like, I, I was doing that too. And I just realized, Ryan, that we men or we dads need to stop doing that because you're diminishing yourself and your self-worth. And in my view, with my dad, he was doing the best he could and I was doing the best I could. And were there times where I missed out on opportunities because I was traveling for work? Yeah. Did I beat myself up over it? Yeah. But the, the bottom line there, Ryan, is if I wasn't working, I wasn't able to help support my family. And if I'm not supporting my family, it, it, then I, I don't have anything. So that's you know, one of the life lessons I've, I've just had to come to realization recently was that dads need to stop beating ourselves up. We need to just understand that we're, we're going to make mistakes, own up to it, and, you know, let your kids know that, you know, dads fail, but hopefully we learn, we learn from it. Yeah. And speaking about learning, one thing that, uh, you and I have, have talked about um, before is uh, stoicism and, and uh, learning um, new ways of, of approaching things. And you just um, showed a, a book. Can you tell us a little bit about stoicism and how that uh, impacts your life and, and you know maybe uh, what you could have learned um, or apply that to you, you know, your former self going through a divorce? Oh, you know, that's a great question. So let me, so Ryan Holiday and uh, Stephen Halsman, uh, The Daily Stoic. So one of my mentors gave me that book for Christmas last year. And I really, it's it's one of those books, Ryan, where I wish I had that years ago. Uh, because for me, Stoicism is about understanding what is in your control. So you and I are right now having a conversation I can't control what you're going to say. You can't control what I'm going to say. Just like our kids, I, I can't control what if my son shows up to the house or not. And so with Stoicism, it was all about letting things go. You know, there are many times, especially in the world of divorce, when, you know, for example, you get an email, you know, from your former spouse and it just enrages you. Well, what triggered it? And so the, the Stoics talk about, you know, again, what you can control and letting things go. And so for me, it's a daily ritual reading that book, you know, just trying to figure out things that I can use in my life, in my daily life of what the Stoics talked about. You know, you know, it's, it's it, you know, not everybody in your life is going to be your best friend, but what can you learn from them? And um I think parents should really look into stoicism as far as help parenting because there's so many uh, things that they can learn about not only themselves, but how to take some of the teachings and, and hand it down to their kids. Yeah, I think that that um, is something that really resonates with me. Um, I uh, was interviewed for another podcast and it was, kind of presented, uh, you know, me as the stoic lawyer. Uh, and in particular, how I found stoicism was just through my own um, personal uh, need. I mean, being a divorce lawyer is, uh, can be at times exhausting because I, I, you know, for better or for worse, I go through, it's, it's not my divorce. I tell people, this is not my life. This is not, you know, my divorce. And, but going through that journey with, with people, what, what you, shared uh is something that I, I unfortunately take home with me and in having to grapple with that and the stress and also dealing with uh, uh divorce lawyers who can be uh difficult but i think that men in particular the stoicism really um resonates those principles of of not um losing control of your anger uh, and approaching each and every day and expecting someone, you know, Marcus Aurelius, one of the better known Stoics, um, would write every morning that he was going to meet thieves and liars and 
a lot of, you know, people going through a divorce, that's how they feel about their, their, uh, you know, their significant, their, their other, their estranged, you know, spouse is that, um, you know, they're liars or thieves or whatever it is. And when you mentally prepare for that, um, and they send you that email, you're expecting it. And instead of reacting with anger, um, you are better able to take the high road and really focus on your time. Cause as you mentioned, Tommy, I mean, you had every other weekend. So if you are spending your weekend on the phone with your ex wife or emailing her or ruminating, that is time taken away from your son. And you're not the best version of yourself during that time. So you can only control that time. Yeah. And I, I remember, you know, years ago before discovering Ryan Halliday and even Tim Ferriss talking about, you know, stoicism. Um, and I can't remember the young girl's name. I just listened to uh, an episode of Simon Sinek's uh, podcast and uh, this lady developed a, uh, a course on diversity and she bases it on stoicism. And I, I remember years ago, Ryan, when when people would say, oh, they're very stoic. And at the time it was, it was negative that they had, you know, no feeling that they were very, uh, you know, stone-like and there was no blood you know, pumping through them. And then after doing more research and reading, like you were saying, Marcus Aurelius, um, you know, I, I've got another book that one of my dogs really liked cause he ate it pretty good, but, you know, reading um, a lot of the Stoic information is, it, it's, it's like common sense, but it's not common. So I, I really took a, a 360 when I started learning more and more about Stoicism that it is a compliment when people say, oh, they're very Stoic, because in my mind, that means that they're able to listen and not react. And I think a lot of times, especially in your situation in the in divorce world, you've got clients that are overreacting without listening first. And, you know, that's, that's probably, you know, as a parent, that's one of the biggest things I've, I've taken away more uh, as a parent is, is the listening uh, to my kids versus, you know, stepping in and giving them advice. I, I I've taken the, the time where I want them to organically start that conversation of saying, Hey, can you help me with this? Or what do you think of this? And so because of, you know, reading uh, stoic philosophy, I've become, uh, I, I think in my view, uh, a better listener and it's helped me, um, you know, as a podcast host is to be able to just listen and not react right away. Yeah, I think that there's a number of tenets of stoicism that resonate with me personally, personally, but also in particular the dads um, going through a divorce because, I mean, it's a stressful time. You talked about therapy, and I always counsel people um, and tell them I'm a counselor. I'm a counselor at law. I am not a therapist, but you, going through a divorce, it is going through hell, and I see it all the time and just dealing with the mental health, people deal with it in different ways. Some people, they get, you know, heavy into the religion. Some people, they exercise. Some people, you know, abuse it with a bottle. Um, you know, some, it could be hookers and blow. I mean, it, it really depends. And so, you know, I, I certainly have had, um, and, and not to be, you know, gender specific, but, um, you know, when you talk to guys about going to therapy, uh, it, or yoga or those kinds of things. A lot of guys just kind of are like, that's a little bit too woo woo or too like, um, I, I can get through this. The stoicism on the other hand, it, it relates to very similar concepts, but it's just, it seems to be more approachable for, for the dads. At least that's just been my observation. And I don't know if that's, um, something that, that you can comment on. Well, I, 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 I do agree with you, Ryan. And again, not, you know, not to say it's all men, but, you know, for the most part, we men are raised, you know, you're not here to cry, you know, rub dirt on it. You know, I'll give you something to cry about. And 
for, for me at a young age, I realized, you know, the importance of therapy and I learned, you know, that it's okay um, to ask for help. And it, it's okay to say to another man, how, how can I help you? You know, I, I really feel that um, we're getting, we're, we're, we uh, as, as men and as dads, we're getting to a new, a new phase where, and it, it is a little bit of the woo-woo. I love the woo-woo. I mean, my wife and I, in the morning, we'll we'll sit on the back and have our coffee, and she'll say, hey, you want to do a meditation? I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, just 10 minutes of just starting your day out on a, on a good day. I mean, um, yeah, I, I used to do the, uh, what's his name, Tony Horton's uh, P90X, uh, but for me, I love the yoga stuff. I'm, I'm not flexible. I mean, I'll, I would have to stretch to stretch so I don't hurt something these days, but I feel that that's the woo woo is so good for us, man. It is, it, it lets us be very vulnerable and, and then being vulnerable with other men going, huh, you, we, we just did this together. How cool is that? You know, and you start building upon that. And so I, I, uh, I'm a big woo-wooer, Ryan. I love the woo-woo stuff. I mean, uh, Headspace is, you know, one of the apps on my phone. I mean, as I travel, it's, you know, I have that. And I have the SiriusXM app where at night, if I if I know I'm, I can't shut off the monkey brain and, you know, just listening to some kind of music to just settle me down. And so I, I think we should just start a podcast right now, Ryan, called Woo Woo. Woo Woo for Dads. Uh, well, speaking of podcasts, can you tell the listeners a little bit about what you do on blending the family? So uh, the podcast started off with uh, originally my wife and I. I have a radio background, 10 years in radio, and I just felt it was a great medium to just share people's stories with. And then one day my wife said, eh, this is all you. And so um, I, I've, I originally started, you know, with you know, the title blending the family talking about, you know, other uh, bonus parents and blended families. And then some of the things are part of the show are like, what's a, a good wine on that first date after you've been divorced and you, you're ready to, you know, go out into the world. Um, one of the recent podcasts I did was there's a lady um, who, <laughs> She is a animal animal behaviorist, say that 10 times fast, and uh, a divorce mediator. She took the two, blended them together, and now, so if you're going through a divorce, Ryan, and you and your spouse have a dog, you would contact her to see who gets the dog. I mean, there are like three states in the United States that recognize pets just like children. So there's there's cases that... People are fighting for animals, which I, I love. Um, you know, the podcast uh, is about just sharing stories and, you know, trying to spotlight uh, positive fatherhood. And, you know, again, I, I think we're, we're, we're on a new wave, Ryan, of, of positive fatherhood. I mean, there's so many great dads out there and, you know, the, the, the new book, My Dad's Advice at 5.04 a.m., I want to make sure that I put the spotlight on, you know, yeah, in, in your in your world, Ryan, I'm sure there's a lot of crazy ex-husbands or idiot ex-husbands. That was me, but I'm an awesome dad. You know, I, I love my kids. I love doing, you know, whatever I can to support them. And so um, with the podcast, again, I get to share uh, other people's stories to help promote uh, positive fatherhood. So why'd you write the um, book, uh, your recent book, uh, Your Father's Advice at 5.04 a.m.? Why, why'd you write the book? Um, so the book title comes from my TEDx talk. And with that was just a whirlwind. Um, once I got accepted, I was like, oh, crap, I got to put something together. And the the first thing that popped in my head was, uh, so the backstory is 
when your kids are born, you know, you start calling family members to say, you know, you're a grandmother, you're a grandfather, what have you. And I had this conversation way before uh, my son Connor was born with my dad. And my dad really wasn't accepting his role of being a grandfather. And so the, the morning of uh, Connor being born, hence at 5.04 a.m., I was talking to my dad and my dad said, as, as a dad, your role is to screw up your kid as best you can. And my dad has a very dry sense of humor. So I really didn't want to take it that level. I want to screw him up uh, as best I could with love and just hanging out with him. And so the, the book, the way I formatted the book was I took the TEDx talk, but I also wanted to put in, you know, how my dad's advice affected me, not as just a dad, not as a man, but as a bonus dad. And the the book just walks people through, you know, I'll admit there, there's a lot of um, struggles in the book that I talk about. And the point of the book though, Ryan, was I wrote this book for actually for single moms to show that there are really good dads out there. And I wanted to showcase that we, we men do struggle, that we do have, those issues of we're trying to compete against, you know, our kid's mom when when we should be on the same side. And I talk about that in the book. And so the way the book ends is um, my wife and I were out on a, on a date night and met a couple who were visiting from Chicago. And I we started talking about, you know, parenting. And I told the the, the gentleman at the bar, I said, well, this is what my dad came up with, that I should screw up my kid as best he can. He looks at me, he goes, your dad was right. And I was like, wow. And so the, the funness of the book is just talking about how this advice came to be, but at the same time, you know, you know, showing other moms that, you know, I'm an idiot ex-husband but I'm there for, for not only my son, but my two bonus daughters. And so that's, that's where the book comes from. And so September, September, the book is hopefully out. Well, hopefully listeners can check that out. You mentioned bonus parent and bonus uh, daughters. Why can you tell our listeners, why do you use bonus instead of step? What does step mean? I mean, I, I never understood it. My wife never understood it. I mean, if you look back on the history of the the TV show, The Brady Bunch, because a lot of a lot of my philosophy comes from The Brady Bunch, but they never used the word step. They never labeled the kids, and so I, I know it's not reality. And so if I'm going to have to explain to somebody who these other people are, these now uh, young adults that are in my life who they are, I want to put a positive spin on it. And so the positive spin is instead of saying, oh, this is my stepdaughter or this is their stepmom or whatever, bonus. I mean, I, it's it should be a bonus that you're a part of a new family and that you get to uh, be a part of it. And so bonus just, I don't know where I heard it, honestly, Ryan, but it just, it stuck with me. And so I, I just think, if we could take labels away, that's fine. But I understand that kids still need that comfort. Um, and so bonus bonus just stuck with us. Well, if you are, uh, if someone's interested in looking for someone that's going to combine the Brady Bunch with stoicism, uh, <laughs> Tommy, you are the guy. Uh, for, for people that want to find out more information about you and and you, you know the 25 divorce tips for dads uh or uh your newest book uh you mentioned it's coming out in september where can people find uh more information about you i'm so happy the new website is up blendingthefamily.com 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 um so yeah that's all, all in a nutshell you can get the the latest episode of the podcast you can uh read uh blogs um so yeah it's all there blendingfamily.com well thanks uh tommy and and people can check out uh blendingthefamily.com uh and until next time 
Uh, this is Ryan Calamea and Divorce at Altitude. Thanks again.